Welcome to another video brought to you by the training department of Deepwell Services. I'm Josh Tafani and I'll be your host today as I walk you through the maintenance, repair and inspection of a low torque valve. Also known as a 1x2, 2x2, MSI or quarter turn valve. These valves are used on the equalize and bleed offs of our units. The ones we use are one by twos, but we also have some two by twos floating around in the field. Before we jump into it, let's take a look at the components of the low torque valve. The components of the plug valve rebuild kit include the plug, two inserts. We use the split inserts here the adjusting cap o-ring, the plug seals with the brass on one side, and the insert o-rings. As far as tools, uh, we'll need a breaker bar or some kind of bar to remove the adjusting nut off the valve, a 9 16 ratchet with a deep socket, uh, some high pressure grease, NICs, WD-40 and some rags, and then a high pressure grease gun to grease it back up after. First things first, we want to make sure the valve is bled off, open to atmosphere, and in the open position so we ensure we don't have any trap pressure. If you have a loose 1502 valve, I recommend securing it to a stump to keep the valve in place during the rebuild. Again, make sure the valve is in the open position before removing any of the components. We're going to start by removing the top cap screw with our 916th ratchet and socket. There are two washers under that, so be careful removing your handle. And then we'll also want to remove the stop collar. Leave the cap screw in place. That'll make this assembly easier and you'll be able to pull out the eternal assembly all at once. We want to start by removing the adjusting nut on the bottom. This may be tight, so you might have to use a valve bar to get her crack loose. Once she's moving, take a, a breaker bar or the handle of your ratchet, turn her counterclockwise until she's fully unthreaded. Once fully unthreaded, pull straight up and the internal assembly will come out. After you remove the internal assembly, take some rags and WD-40 to clean the cavity of the body, remove all the old grease. Uh, then we can check for uh, scarring, pitting, or washing inside the body of the valve. Pay special attention to the inlets and outlets of the valve. Uh, you, right on the edges is where you'll get the most common wash. I also like to check the roll pins in the body, make sure they're not broke or deformed. A new insert should slide up and down on the roll pins, nice and smooth. After inspecting the cavity, take your high pressure grease and give the inside of the cavity a light coat. Don't worry about coating the threads. We'll put never seize on the adjusting nut before inserting it back into the cavity. Be sure to inspect the grease fitting as well. Uh, you want to check for any damage to the sealing surface on the top. Uh, make sure the gun slides on and off easily. If it is damaged, go ahead and pop that one out, replace it, torquing the new one to 50 to 60 foot pounds. Uh, do not put thread sealant or Teflon onto the high pressure grease fitting, uh, it's not needed. After we take out the subassembly, remove the inserts off of the plug and we can inspect those. Uh, we're looking for scarring or wash right around the, the holes as well. Same thing on the plug, you want to look for scarring or wash. Uh, if that's present on either of the components, we'll go ahead and, and need a fresh rebuild for this valve. If a fresh rebuild is needed, flop your valve on, subassembly on its side, remove the 9 16th screw from the bottom. Remove the two washers, and then remove the plug from the adjusting nut. Sometimes the plug seal stays in the adjusting nut. If so, you have to pry that out of that groove. 
Then take your adjusting nut, remove the O-ring. You may need a pick to do so. Clean both the threads and the inside of the adjusting nut real well. Take a little bit of WD-40 or lubricant. Remove all the old grease. Once you've removed all the old grease, we'll take a little bit of the high pressure grease. Give the adjusting nut O-ring a light coat and install the new O-ring onto the adjusting nut. I then take my plug and put a light coat of high pressure grease on the large diameter of the plug. After we grease the plug, give the inserts a light coat of grease as well, both inside and outside, and place onto the plug. Make sure your holes are lining up. Next, we'll take one of our plug seals. Uh, you'll notice with the plug seals, one side is brass and one side is rubber. We'll make sure that the brass always goes out away from the center of the valve. Give our plug seal a light coat of grease and we'll slide it over the end opposite of the hex. Again, brass facing out. Then we can insert the assembly into the adjusting nut. Make sure it seats all the way down. And then I also double check the gap between my two inserts to be sure that there's an even gap on both sides. This will help you when inserting it back into the valve body. Take our insert O-ring seals, give those a light, light coat of grease, and insert into the grooves onto the inserts. Then you can flip the subassembly on its side, Reinstall your two washers in your cap screw. The other plug seal, we're gonna take that and place it down inside the cavity of the valve. After a light coat of grease, we'll place the plug seal down inside the cavity. Again, make sure that the brass is facing down into the groove. That way it's away from the center of the valve. Be sure it seats all the way down inside the recess in the bottom of the cavity. Before we install the subassembly back into the valve body, uh, we'll go ahead and coat the threaded area of the adjusting nut in the O-ring with some Never Cease. Now we're ready to reinstall our subassembly. Before reinstalling the subassembly, make sure you lubricate the pocket of the valve. I have my never seize on my threads and the O-ring of the adjusting nut. Be sure when you're sliding it in, you align the slots on the inserts with the roll pins down the body. You might have to adjust the position of those inserts to get the right spacing so it falls down into place. Once it falls down into place, screw the adjusting nut back in. Bury the adjusting nut until you have no more than half a thread showing. On a valve with an actuator in line, you can't see through your bore, so this will ensure that you're lined up with your internals. With a loose 1502 valve, uh, to check your alignment with the adjusting nut, you can look through the bore and it should be lined up, up and down. Uh, if it's a little bit out of alignment, go ahead and adjust your adjusting nut to where it lines up and you can have that straight line right through your bore. Also on top of your valve, you do have two directional arrows uh, that, that give you the direction of your uh, plug. If you're having trouble lining it up, just take a look at those and they will be lined up with the bore. Once you're happy with the adjustment of your adjusting nut, uh, we'll go ahead and throw our uh, handle assembly back on. That starts with the stop collar. The stop collar, when it's in the open position, should be hitting your, your stop screw. You can put this on upside down. Uh, 
or a couple different positions on top of this hex. So be sure that it is against the sop screw in the open position. That way when you function the handle, uh, it's going to be functioning correctly. Then we can throw our handle on top. Again, make sure that uh, your indicators are lining open with the valve. Two washers. Then your top cap screw. If you want to double check your stop collar, give your valve a function. Make sure it stops perpendicular to the valve with the indicators. And then we'll be greasing this valve in the open position. Anytime you rebuild the valve, we'll want to go ahead and pack it tight with grease. Slide the grease gun over the fitting. Make sure the, the back bleed off of the grease gun is dialed in. Then we go ahead and pump the valve up tight. Be sure when you're pumping it tight that it's not just spewing out around the greaser, it's actually going into the valve. We're aiming to pump these valves up to 3,000 PSI. If you just pump them until the handle is really stiff and you can't pump it anymore, you'll achieve that. Once you can't pump it anymore, it's nice and tight, we'll go ahead and function our valve. One function's all you need to equalize that pressure. Then we'll grease it again. Again, so you cannot pump that anymore. You wanna make sure this is tight, tight. And grease it again. You wanna grease this valve until it gets tight in about three to five pumps. Then you know that valve is full of grease. A lot of times you get pressure locked with this gun on there, so just unscrew that pressure release on the back of the, the grease gun head, then you can slide on off. When we are greasing, we want to shoot for every 25 to 50 joints at least, depending on well bore conditions. That wraps up our valve rebuild. Thanks for joining me today and feel free to reach out if you have any questions.